blinding sunlight is such a pain. No way I can get a nap in this weather. Take it easy.
Planted. Quietly now.
quietly now. Take it easy.
It's raining again? Oh, this isn't good. If the rain washes away the traces, it's gonna set us back a long way. It's raining again? Oh, this isn't good. If the rain washes away the... We're a few people short today. Morning, friends. Singcho said he wants to take some time and focus on writing poems, so he'll join us later. Noelle has other duties today, so she asked me to tell everyone not to wait up for her. Oh, okay, well, never mind. What about Kelly Roy, though? She said she'd be. I got here really early, but I haven't seen her yet. Are you talking about the girl with the blue hair? I saw her on the bridge near Dihua Marsh during my morning training. She looked a little upset, so I didn't want to disturb her. Upset? Oh no, what should we do? Was it something we said last night? Oh, Paimon's worried. I agree. If she's run into some kind of trouble, I'd like to help her. Huh? You're all going? Then I'm coming, too! Shall we start with the bridge? We're all here a little early, so there should be time. Good idea! We'll be back in a jiffy! So this is the place? 
We ran it. She looked like something was weighing on her mind then as well. It's also not far from where we were dropping those leaves. Huh. Leave? Oh, right. We were so busy matching couplets we forgot to mention. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder... Could Miss Callie Roy have been the one who wrote that poem on the leaf? Hmm? What makes you say that? Oh, sorry. Uh, nothing. Well, uh, nothing concrete. Uh, just a hunch, I guess. It's just... That poem on the leaf kind of gave me the same feeling as when I saw her yesterday. So much sadness. Now that you mention it, this is upstream from where we found the poem. Huh? Hey, look! Over there! Another leaf! Wow, you're right! And this one has writing on it too! After that leaf! Take it easy. Can't you just fly over and grab um but Paimon can't swim? What if Paimon accidentally falls into the water? Stopped. No! <laughs> we find are the words still legible, or have they been washed out? Looks like the ink's intact. Let Paimon take a look at what it says. Related to the poem we wrote in reply yesterday. She must have picked up one of our leaves. Spring. Young boy. Hmm. It's looking a lot like Callie Roy was the one who wrote this. She seems to care a lot about that story, huh? Actually, when Paimon first saw her, Paimon was wondering, do you think... Is it possible that... She's... Uh... Based on the current... And account... This should be far enough upstream. Let's split up and search the area. what I saw the other day. Huh? Uh, why are you all looking at me like that? Oh no, my body, is it? That voice is definitely Kelly Roy's. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, please wait a moment. Oh no, did I use up too much energy? How did you... What's going on here? Miss Kelly Roy... 
Are you some kind of adeptus? No. I'm so sorry for deceiving you all for so long. Actually, I'm an Oceanid who flowed here from Fontaine long ago. What's an Oceanid? Ah, the Grandmaster has mentioned them before. The Oceanids were the familiars of the former Hydro Archon. Uh, they all fled Fontaine after the Archon died and uh, settled across the world. That's correct. Though, to tell you the truth, I can't even completely recall how I found myself here. I have a vague impression of my ancestral home, but I can't recall clearly anything I saw on my journey. All I know is that by the time I arrived in Mondstadt, I had lost most of my power and couldn't even sustain a physical form. Eventually, I settled in a place called Springvale, where I slowly began to regain my power. Springvale is a serene and beautiful place. The water that flows through there is clear and pure, just like the hearts of the people who dwell there. So you're the Spring Fairy of Springvale? Yes, Diona, and I remember you too, you know. When you were little, you often came to the spring at night to speak with me. Really? You're not messing with me, are you? I... Oh, I always thought that was just a local legend. Your favorite little pillow, the fish one? Its name is Bubbles, is it not? Ah, uh, yep! All those childhood memories. <gasps> so they weren't just a dream. So... If this is true, then all those things written on the leaves... I see. So you were the ones who found my leaf. Well, you are correct. The Spring Fairy and Heart of Clear Springs is me. No wonder you were asking us so many questions about it. So, the boy from the story... Is Finch. I always loved listening to people's dreams. And still do, to this day. Whether they're beautiful, sad, or filled with emotions I couldn't understand at the time. One night, a little boy came to the spring. The tears that fell from his face were more fragile than a moonbeam, and purer than the morning dew. I like humans, and wanted to understand them better. I also wanted to make sense of the feelings contained in his tears that were, then, a mystery to me. Yes, we often met under the stars, sharing our stories with one another. Sometimes, we'd stay up all night and see who would hear the first bird chirping from the boughs, or the first cicada of summer. Aww, that sounds lovely! But, one day, just like the book says, I saw an emotion in Finch's eyes that I couldn't reciprocate. I felt out of my depth, in uncharted waters. But I knew all too well that we lock folk face a very different fate from that of humans. Whatever was happening, I didn't want it to lead to Finch writing a chapter of his life that he would later come to regret. So I fled and never appeared before him again. Oh, Caliroe. My strength returns very slowly, and even after decades, I can only sustain a physical form for a very short time. I once hoped that Finch would be able to move on, and meet me when the stars in the night sky have all gone out. But after seeing so many people's stories, and hearing about all their dreams, I have gradually come to understand Finch's heart. This feeling of wanting to respond to his feelings is surging relentlessly in my chest, and I can no longer restrain it. But I'm also scared. Scared that if I go and see him now, I'll bring nothing but disappointment, and even more pain when it comes time to part. Oh. It really is a difficult choice. Mm. Please go see him! Huh? I know Grandpa Finch, and he's a really kind person. When I was struggling to learn how to draw maps, he was always encouraging me, telling me not to give up 
always keep trying and get out there and have some adventures. He often tells me stories about his past, but I've never once seen a look of regret or sadness in his face. And even though Grandpa Finch loves adventures, he still stands there by the spring every day, as if he's waiting for something. I believe that he's serious about his feelings for you, Miss Callie Roy. He's never stopped hoping that he'll see you again one day. So if you want to see him too, then what are you waiting for? <gasps> huh? Ah, uh, I, I, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit too excited and, uh, and I just thought... I understand. That settles it. I've decided. I will go back and see Finch. You will? But I... Sure. Just sit. Would you come to Springvale with me? I cannot maintain this form for much longer. Leave it to me. I'm really close. Also, please keep Finch's in my secret. I wouldn't want Springvale's tranquil waters to become agitated on account of all this. Your secret is safe with me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> That's a promise. Great. I can't thank you all enough. Uh, what's wrong? Are you going to turn back into a water droplet? No, I'm sorry. It's just that my mind's racing. <laughs> as much as I want to talk to him again, I'm still worried that I won't have the words when the time comes. A poem? Hmm. Okay. And it will be called Heart of Clear Springs. <laughs> clear skies can do nothing to hide the brilliance of lightning. Divine bolts can strike even in the absence of rain. Oh, are you okay? It's nothing. I'm just... Okay, don't panic. Wait here, Callie Roe. I'll go fetch Grandpa Finch. Take it slow, Diona. Finch isn't a young man anymore. He's not as steady on his feet. I can still... hold on. Okay, stay strong. You can do it! Uh, is that Diona? You're back early today. Today is your special day, Grandpa Finch. Can you come with me? Oh? Well, where are we going? Over there, to the waterfall. <laughs> Did you catch a nice little fishy? Uh, just come with me already. This is extremely important. But I promised your father that I'd go to... Th Grandpa Finch! All right, <laughs> all right. No need to get worked up. I'm right behind you. That's more like it. Now come on, I'll help you. <laughs> oh, Draft's daughter is just like him when she's on a mission. What are all these people doing here? Even Mika's here? <laughs> How's work been going lately? And even some friends from abroad, if I'm not mistaken. You do know that today's not my birthday, don't- Greetings, Mr. Finch. My name is Chong Yoon. We all met at the Poetry Gala and... Well, 
there's someone we'd like to introduce you to. Finch. <gasps> that voice. Kelly Roe. I didn't think you'd still remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember all right. How could I ever forget? Although your appearance is different than I recall, back then you looked like you'd stepped right out of a fairy tale. <laughs> but I'm one to talk. Of course a fairy from a fairy tale can change forms. But in your eyes, I'm probably the one who's changed beyond all recognition. <laughs> Oh, even after all these years, you still know just what to say to make me laugh. I thought you were only able to appear in the dead of night. There have been times when I've wondered whether it really was all a dream. I'm sorry I kept you waiting for so long, Finch. Oh, it can't have been that long. It's been but the blink of an eye, really. Finch, would you like to hear a poem I wrote for you? A poem? You write poetry now? Well, of course. I'd be delighted to listen. I'll hang on every word that leaves your lips. In that case, let me read you a story about the Spring Fairy. Far from my native land I roamed. In streams I slept, many seasons I met as the sun set and rose. I searched for a garden to call a home, and the moonlight ebbed as the water flowed. A soft breeze beckoned me unto a spring. Sleep, weary wanderer, your journey is over. May the dancing petals sweeten your slumber. At dawn, I hummed the melody of a distant stream, and the songs in the night serenaded my dreams. A boy's tender tears trembled through the water, stirring me more than any starlight sonata. He wove me a wreath from past petals and future buds, I crossed beyond the veil of dreams to the realm of flesh and blood. Look at the love that shines from his eager gaze. Answer the call of his heart, lest this moment go to waste. The kittens and fireflies invited my heartstrings to sing. But I was a stranger to the melody of mankind, and knew not how this tune should begin. As the river of dreams trickled into the ocean blue, Every time a crystal fly flapped its wings, older it seemed he grew. But I learned to fathom human ways each stumbling step I took, and clouds of confusion became crystal clear in the vulnerable verse I wrote. As seed yearns for soil and trees for the sun, a once foreign melody inside my heart sung, and it cried out your name on every string it could strum. Now, I give my dream to you. May it be in your slumber a sweet spring to quench your thirst. Now, I hand my heart to you, praying my belated promise might meet still with your trust. <sighs> yes. This is how I remember you from when we first met. All those years ago. It really- Finch, I- It's okay. I understand. Your poem, it- It explains everything. Thank you, Finch. Please. 
It's so beautiful. This is a droplet of water condensed from my own power. Finch, I don't have a physical form like humans, and I can't stay by your side. I don't know how long it'll be before I can change back into human form again. But as long as this droplet remains with you, our hearts will always be connected, no matter the distance between us. I will always be one with the spring. From this day onwards, if you call me, I will meet you in your dreams. Oh, it's so romantic! <laughs> You've really learned a lot, haven't you? And you don't even mind that the kids are watching. Does it bother you? How could it possibly? This is the happiest moment of my life. I just worry that once I go to sleep, I won't ever want to wake up again. Huh? Don't say that! <laughs> I'm only joking. <sighs> it seems that you still have much to learn. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa Finch and Kelly Rowe look so happy. Oh, what a perfect moment. Diona, thank you for fetching Finch for me. I've never forgotten you either. I used to chat with you a lot. Wasn't it ever annoying? <laughs> of course not. You are one of the truest friends I have in the entire world. That's why I gave you your gift. So that a part of me could always be with you. Huh? Wait. So is Diona's ability to mix delicious drinks from disgusting ingredients a blessing from this water spirit? And if so, is it also possible that my pure Yang spirit is a gift from some being? <laughs> my physical form is about to disappear. Finch. Yes? never regretted meeting you, or deciding to talk to you that night. Not once, all these long years. Not for a single moment. <laughs> it probably goes without saying, but neither have I. <laughs> Although, it was different from in the stories. Fateful night. I never gave you that kiss. This gift that represents my promise and my love. I give it to you now. Huh? It's okay, everyone. She's gone now. Finch. Don't worry now. She hasn't gone far. Just like she said, she'll always be one with the spring. By our side and in our dreams. You're all back! And it looks like you're in much better spirits than before. Hootow's a step ahead. She's already talking about printing a poetry anthology. She said she... can't wait for everyone's final words because I'm itching to pull the trigger. 
By which I assume she meant she eagerly anticipates receiving everyone's freestyle poetry submissions to help her close the deal. <laughs> Where have you all been? I've been waiting here forever. Perhaps they lacked sufficient inspiration and wished to have an emergency communion with nature. And with any luck, I'll bet they heard some fine poetry along the way. Code Death Bard! Does this mean that right from the start you... Oh, uh... Right from the start, you said you would treat us to a nice meal! Huh? <laughs> uh, did I? <laughs> Very well. Since the Traveler agrees, then it looks like I can't just keep this time. Diona! Dear Diona, could I trouble you to fix us a couple of your delicious beverages? <laughs> you wish. All right. Well, normally I'd never agree, but since I happen to be in a good mood today... Huh? So, just what have you guys been up to all this time? Why does it feel like there are some unspoken words hanging in the air here that everyone is privy to but myself? Really? Must be the breeze. You're reading way too much into it. Y yeah, yeah, that's right. We're just, uh, taking a walk. Inspiration walk, since it worked so well last time. <laughs> hmm, so even Mika's in on it? Chongyun, how about you tell me what happened on the sly? I've just remembered that I heard about a haunted house recently that you'll definitely want to check out. I'm willing to bet that even your pure Yang spirit won't be able to scare off these demons. I appreciate the gesture, but no thanks. Not this time. And I'm starting to think that maybe this pure Yang spirit isn't such a bad thing after all. Huh? What the? What's gotten into you? Okay, that confirms it. I call shenanigans. Something big definitely went down here. <laughs> Now that I have reclaimed one of the seven authorities from the hands of the usurpers, I have regained my true form. I am now a fully-fledged dragon, powerful enough to judge the rest of the gods. My final destiny is to judge the usurper king in the heavens above. But until that time comes, I will lend my power to you. Well, that sounded spoilery. Spoilery. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 